It's in our nature to protect the ones we love, to stand up to any danger, to be strong and courageous, to always be prepared, to keep our family safe, to be the first line of defense. We are born to protect. up and welcome to the channel my name is Hagshot and thank you for joining us today I want to take you through the entire MMP lineup here and uh, help you to maybe make an informed decision if you're looking at an MMP uh, everything from the carry model up to competition and everything in between uh, kind of tell you some of the differences between gen 1 gen 2 and some of these different models uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started really big thanks to our shot team over on patreon all the names you see on the screen here are our five dollar and up patrons and, and of course we have an entire community over on patreon and we really appreciate their support and also the uscca who is sponsoring the video uh they support law-abiding citizens that carry and uh, own firearms here in america so if you are one of those which undoubtedly you are or you're looking at becoming one make sure that you have somebody on your side in case you ever have to draw your gun in self-defense um, all kinds of training tools for you to get you started in the right direction so uh, they're an awesome group of people supporting law-abiding citizens here in the united states so check them out with the link that i have down below uh, let's go ahead and get started so we're going to start with the carry model and this is a gen 1 MMP shield and the reason I brought this out is because this is like one of the oldest guns in our firearm collection this is what we basically started the channel with um, and this is going to be a great carry gun now it's a little bit dated as far as round count when you look at it compared to a p365 or a hellcat there's things you can do to up the round count uh, depending on what state you live in uh, one thing that's great about the mp lineup though too is they have california massachusetts legal models that you can actually purchase which is uh, really great if you live in one of those more restrictive states but this gun right here as far as like your basic specs you have a 3.1 inch barrel 6.1 inches in overall length and 18.3 ounces. One thing you will tell right from the get-go is it has a very thin profile, but what is awesome about the shield is that you pretty much have almost a full grip. Now I have a little bit smaller hands, of course, but this is a seven round base magazine that it comes with. It also comes with an eight round extended that's gonna give you uh, a little bit extra room there for your pinky. So you have the best of both worlds here. And the gun's not so small. Whenever you take it to the range, you feel like you literally have a toy in your hand. With this one, you feel like you have a real gun in your hand with real sights. Um, it has all the features of the bigger MMPs in a thinner, smaller package. Now, disclaimer. If you're going to get one of these, I would go with the M2.0 version because it has a better trigger. It has better texturing on the grip. Um, and, and to me, it's just a better gun. One nice thing about the MMPs as well that you're not going to get with Glock and some of the other brands is the option with and without a safety. And on all of their models, you can get them with or without a safety. So if a safety makes you feel better and that's going to be your deciding factor, uh, Smith & Wesson has you covered on all of their pistol models. So that's pretty cool. On this one, you can see the safety is very small really flush to the frame and that's that's the whole idea with this shield it's really small something you can have on you at pretty much all times and mrs tech shot carried this gun for a long time um in a tolster holster inside the waistband and she absolutely loves it fish scale style serrations which is uh pretty much the standard on mmp's hinge trigger design a magazine release that is reversible even on the smaller version which is really nice so one thing I'll show you is the progression of the grip texturing uh, from Smith & Wesson. So this is their original right here, and it's pretty good, but it's kind of slippery. So if your hands get any kind of moisture, if they start to sweat at all, this is going to start to slip around in your hand, which is not good with a small gun like this. So what they did is they went to this, which is more of a rough texturing finish, which is awesome at the range. It's awesome in humid climates. Uh you will most likely want to wear a shirt in between your skin and this grip texturing because it is pretty rough. Um, and then you have the Shield EZ, which is their newest grip texturing, which is more subtle than this right here. They're more aggressive styling, but definitely better and a better gripping surface 
than their original which is here on top so you can kind of tell that progression there and also this grip texturing on the newer shield ez actually fills the entire grip and so does the uh, more aggressive grip texturing that they started with on the m 2.0 series so i just want to show you that that's a pretty big upgrade pretty big difference there and of course any grip texturing really can be changed uh, but I, I don't like to change my firearms especially carry guns I just like to leave them where they are that's just me everybody's different but uh, definitely a much better uh, grip texturing if you go with the M2.0 series and especially in the Shield EZ series so real sights actually an awesome carry gun and the trigger is not bad on this firearm either it actually pretty much started Smith & Wesson with doing really better triggers in their guns because before this, they had really not been known for really solid triggers and the shield kind of changed that. So you have a hinge design. So basically what this allows for is if you pull the trigger and you don't pull it the right way, it's not going to fire. All right. So what you have is as the hinge starts to straighten out there, pull it to the rear, reset. You notice how you don't really hear that, right? On the M2.0 versions, it's much better than that. But let's just try the trigger weight out here really quick on the Shield EZ. All right, six pounds, 15 ounces. All right, a little bit heavier, which is what I prefer on a carry gun. Seven pounds, seven ounces. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, seven pounds. So right at that seven pound range. And again, that's the original shield. If you're going to go with one of these, I think the M2.0 version is much better. Let's move up to the Shield EZ. So this is a, one of their newer offerings. And you're going to notice some differences here. So this obviously is a little bit bigger. Let me put them up slide to slide. Here's some differences between the regular shield and the Shield EZ. Shield EZ, 3.6 inch barrel, 6.8 inches in overall length, and 23 ounces compared to 18.3 ounces. Um, of course, these are empty weights. So the Shield EZ is designed for uh, maybe a newer shooter, maybe a woman or somebody with weaker dexterity. This isn't just towards women, obviously. Uh, somebody with carpal tunnel, which I am very familiar with, um, or an older person. And this is slide is very easy to rack. It's a very easy gun to use while you still get a lot of the benefits of the shield. Not quite all the benefits, but 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 a lot of them. Um, you also have a loaded chamber indicator on top, whereas on the regular shield, you have a peep sight down in there. So you can see your brass in the chamber. With this right here, you can actually visually see that there's a round. Obviously, I would never depend on that fully, but you get the idea. Uh, same uh, pretty much same type of sight. Both kind of ramp. They both have that kind of Novak style sight. Um, side profile. All right. You can tell that the shield over here may be a little bit thinner. All right. So the EZ is going to fill your hand up a little bit better. Okay. Um, and it also has a grip safety on the back right there. If we put them on their backs, you can tell you have a little bit of a difference in the grip height as well. So how is this going to affect you? Uh, Grip height is what you're trying to conceal if you are, in fact, concealed carrying. So, um, obviously, the regular shield is going to be easier to conceal. Not quite as easy to shoot and handle at the range. And not quite as easy, um, sometimes, to actually draw from a holster. All right? So, there's many variations to this, as you can see. But the Shield EZ gives you some of those great benefits. It also has the M2.0 add-on. So, you have the front and rear slide serrations. Um... You also have the better grip texturing like we already talked about. Uh, the magazine release is reversible on this model and you have little easy tabs that you can pull down, all right, to help you load the gun. Whereas on the regular shield, you do not have that. So again, this gun is built for somebody to get them started or any other reasons we just talked about. You also have a pick rail on this. So if you wanted to add a light or a laser, maybe this is your one and only gun for now, and you wanted to use it for home defense, you can absolutely do that with this model. And the slide is absolutely the most impressive part of this gun because it is extremely easy to pull this slide. And I actually did a video of how easy is the shield easy to use. Um, you can go over and check that out, but very easy to rack this gun. It's an internally hammered fired firearm and that allows them 
um, to knock the uh, the slide weight down quite a bit because you don't have a striker and a spring and all that to load up each each time you pull the uh, slide back. Um, so, but it still has a pretty great trigger. So if we look at the trigger on this one, a little bit of pressure and it breaks. You hear that? Way more audible reset. And that's what you're going to get out of the M2.0 lineup. Let me pull the trigger on this one so you can kind of see the difference. All right, five pounds, 15 ounces. five pounds, 10 ounces. So quite a bit lighter than the original shield. And again, it's just an easier gun to shoot, to get started with, uh, while still giving you some of those benefits. It also has a much better, um, armor night finish as a, as opposed to the old melanite that they used on the original shields from, from back in the day. So a really awesome gun. Again, very easy to shoot. It also has these little, um, semi wings, uh, grip areas uh, milled into the back of the slide there. So again, just just adding to the uh, to the ease of use with this gun. And I, I hate to keep using the word easy, but that's exactly what this gun is. Very easy to use and very um, confidence inspiring. Okay, because because of that. So and again, all these guns are really simple to break down and clean, maintain, and all that. So you don't really have to worry too much about that. And again, this gun gives you a good set of sights um, while giving you some of those great benefits that we just talked about. Now let's move up to their subcompact. This used to be the old compact in the original m and lineup. So the original lineup, and I don't want to confuse anybody, but just to kind of give you an idea of where they've come from, the original lineup basically did not have the compact at all. It had, or that compact, it had a full size or competition model, uh, or yeah, full size and a competition model, pretty much 17 round gun, and then variations of that 17 round gun. And then you had the compact, which is this gun, which is a 12 round gun. All right. It comes with two magazines. And again, it's going to give you some really awesome features while upping the capacity a little bit. You're also going to up, up the weight and you're going to up, up the grip uh, the width and everything. Uh, but this is now the subcompact in the new lineup. Okay. So the subcompact, let's compare that to the shield. Even though this is the original shield, it's going to be about the same with an M2.0 shield. So what are you going to get with the 12 round gun? You're, you're going to get a wider gun. So this helps you if you're at the range, if you have bigger hands and you can deal with a little bit more weight on a daily basis, as far as carry, then this is going to be a great gun because now instead of seven rounds, you have 12 rounds. You have five more rounds uh, plus one in the chamber. So that's pretty dang good right there. If we look at them slide to slide, where the M2.0 subcompact has a 3.6 inch barrel, 3.1 on the shield. 6.6 .6 inches in overall length uh, compared to your 6.1 and then 25 ounces unloaded, okay? So that may not sound like a lot, but when you load this gun up and you carry it inside the waistband, you're really gonna have to be dedicated to carry a gun like this. Not to say it's hard with the right setup, it's really not that hard, okay? But you have to have a good holster and a good gun belt if you're gonna do IWB, uh, especially with a, uh, with a little bit bigger gun like this. But where this gun really shines, again, you have 12 rounds in the magazine in a gun that is pretty dang short. As a matter of fact, if we look at the grip height on the guns, they are just about the same. The shield may even be just a hair taller. All right. And yet you get five more rounds out of the firearm. So that's the really impressive thing with Smith and Wesson that now if you're willing to move up a little bit in width and weight, you're going to get a firearm with much better capacity. And again, M2.0 series. So you have the front and rear slide serrations, fish scale style. Again, they will come with or without a safety. That's your choice. Upgraded grip texturing. And when you move up to the subcompact, you have the option to change these back straps out, uh, small, medium, and large to fit your hand a little bit better. So these are some of the things that are going to come with the little bit bigger guns that won't come in the smaller shield series of firearms. One more benefit that you have of this gun now is that if you have a bigger brother like this one right here, if I wanna swap the mags and I wanna have a backup for my small gun, 
well, I can do that too. This, this magazine is gonna function perfectly because I now have a double stack gun and a double stack gun, whereas the single stacks don't have that capability of swapping between magazines. So that's a pretty cool thing. At the range, you're gonna notice a huge difference between this, this gun, the subcompact, and the shield, or the shield easy even, where this one is gonna be a little bit less recoil, a little bit less muzzle rise, um, and a little bit more controllable at the range. So again, that's gonna come with some caveats if you're talking about concealed carry. It's always, it's always a give and take when we're talking about firearms and, and specifically guns that can be carried. Um, but you're gonna get a great set of sights. These, these sights are actually ledged a little bit, so if you have to do a one-handed reload, you can do that. And there's all kinds of aftermarket options for these things too. Loaded viewport up top and just one of the best all-around um, carry guns that you can really get. Let's try the trigger on this one. Now this is a new M2.0 version. So you see in there, it was about just under six pounds. Again, if we show the trigger, again, you have the hinge design. See how much more audible that is in the M2.0 series? just much more refined, much better trigger on that one. So that's the subcompact. Now let's go up to their compact. Now this one is in 45, but nothing's really going to change. When you talk about the compact, um, if we're talking about the nine millimeter, it's going to be a 15 round gun. Again, this is 45. So this is going to be a 10 round gun, but this is going to give you that in between size, like, like a Glock 19 or a CZ P10C, something like that for the nine millimeter version of this gun, anywhere from a 3.6 to a four inch barrel. Uh, they have both versions available, 7.3 inches in overall length, depending again on which barrel, um, and right at 26 and a half ounces for this one. All right, so not that much heavier than this guy right here, but it's gonna be quite a bit longer. So let's check it out slide to slide this way. And you can see the difference right there in, in, in barrel length and in slide length. This being a four inch gun, this is 3.6 inches. You can see the difference from the back here. And then the big difference you're gonna, t you're gonna be able to see is right here. Now keep in mind, if this was a nine millimeter, it may be just a hair shorter, but it's gonna be about this length, 12 rounds. If this was a nine, this would be 15 rounds. So you have quite a bit of jump up. So you may be thinking, well, why would I go with the compact and not the subcompact? Um, it depends on what you're going to do with it. I mean, the compact, it definitely can be carried. It's going to be more of a, you better be dedicated to carrying this firearm every single day. All right. The, the, the more you go up in capacity, weight, shootability, all of that, the more dedication you're going to have to show to something like this, or the even just the ability to be able to carry something like this, um, which for most people, I don't know that they would. They would probably more want to go with something like this or a shield. I know I would, um, but that's just me personally. But what you're going to get in a gun like this is a very well-rounded, something you could possibly carry, but definitely use as a home defense and range type of firearm. Gives you maximum comfort where the grip is not a worry at all as far as the length. You're going to get all your digits on there. You're going to have a gun that is super controllable. Light attachments, no problem. Everything on this gun, a little bit uh, longer sight radius, so it's going to be easier to shoot at the range, less muzzle rise, and just an overall better shooting gun most of the time, better grouping, all of that kind of stuff. Of course, you're going to have the option to swap your back straps out on this gun. No problem. And the trigger is going to be just about the same, to be honest with you. A little bit of take up there. Reset. Six pounds, 11 ounces on this one. This one's actually a little bit heavier. Six and a half pounds, okay? So... That's just one of those things. This is a great in-between size. Not You're kind of getting more away from carry at this point, um, or everyday carry, I should say, but it can still be done, again, with the right setup. So the Compact is a really good in-between Glock 19-sized firearm. 
Now we go up to the competition and full size model. So the full size model is not going to be all tricked out like this one. Typically, it's going to be just a standard 17 round gun, maybe a five inch barrel, maybe a four inch barrel or four and a half inch barrel. But this one is the competition ready model. Okay. The core model. Plus it's been through the performance center. So the trigger is better and all that good stuff. Five inch barrel. Let me compare it to the compact here. So you can see I have the compact over here. I have the full size performance center on my right here. And you can see it's quite a bit longer. There it is as far as that. And then I'm just going to kind of show it like this as far as your grip lengths, because this one has the optic on top. Um, you're not going to have that much more grip length. This one is 17 rounds. This is a nine millimeter, whereas this one would be 15 rounds again, assuming it was a nine mil. This one right here though, is going to be basically home defense and competition type, really competition uh, is where this gun shines. It has a ported barrel and slide. So that allows some of the gases to escape before the bullet leaves the barrel. So that's going to keep the muzzle rise down. Um, it's all tricked out stainless steel barrel. You have a better slide stop on this gun. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit wider. It sticks out a little bit further so you can really drop the slide and rack the slide on this gun a lot easier than you can these other models. Of course you do have a rail on this one. You're going to get four different backstrap options on this one. And of course you're going to get 17 rounds as a compared to the 15 and 12 and seven rounds out of the other ones. You're going to get high sights here that will uh, co-witness, depending on what type of optic you're running, uh, hopefully co-witness with uh, that optic, many different optic plates, of course, um, ambidextrous slide stop there, which you do actually get on the compact model and full size models as well. Let's check out the trigger on this one. See what this one's pulling at five pounds, eight ounces. That is by far the lightest. And there's a reason for that. That's because this is made for really good grouping and fast sight acquisition. All right. Depending on what type of red dot you run, this thing is, it's pretty much a race gun. It's built for competitions and stuff. And it is a, an amazing shooting gun. Um, we've done reviews on all these, so I encourage you to go over and check these out. But that's the difference in the M&P lineup in a nutshell. There's some different variations that you're going to find, some threaded options and some with fiber optic sights. But at its core, this is where the M&P lineup is right now as far as uh, uh, 2020, the middle of the year 2020. Um, they have pretty much something for everyone. Um, and I absolutely love the M&P lineup. So uh, there you go. I want to hear what your opinion is. Which MP is your favorite? Leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down. <laughs>